Good evening and thank you for coming to the workshop Effective Presentations. This workshop is designed to teach you what you need to know for when you present in an interview or on the job or maybe in your class, um, anytime that you have to present. Who is your audience? Then we're going to talk about what, how to plan it, what, what, what should you do when you're not presenting in order to get ready. Designing an outline so that the audience knows what you are going to be talking about. How to design some slides, pitfalls, things to avoid, um, how to be successful, presentation tips. So first we're going to talk about the purpose. It's generally to demonstrate your skills. Because a lot of times in IT, they're going to want you to present as if you were training your team in that IT or software application or, or whatever it is. Another time that you might present is at professional development conferences. If your work sends you to Boston for a week to do some tr training, to receive training, you may be asked to stand up and present at that training or when you get back to the office to train your staff. So there's always an um, opportunity to have to do presentations. And if you're not sure about it, there's a lot of really great YouTube videos, resources and things where you can just teach yourself PowerPoint relatively quickly if you're not sure how to use it. Who is your audience? I have presented to students and you can have uh, peers, bosses, deans, so your, top, your, your audience could be two people, it could be five people, it could be a hundred people. It could be peers, it could be super high level senior up people, it could be um, people that report to you. You don't know who your audience is going to be. So if you do know that you're going to be doing a presentation in an interview, it's okay to ask who is the audience. You will be evaluated on the content and your communication skills. Planning though, what is your purpose? What is the topic that you need to discuss? How long do you have? This is a big question. Do you have five minutes or do you have 30 minutes? You might spend three hours preparing a five minute presentation, but what is the most important thing that, they, that you walk out of that room that they walk out knowing because of your five minute presentation? I have done presentations before where I literally had five minutes and after it, when I was not selected for that um, position, I was called by those people asking for more information about what I presented on. And I was able to form networks and, and build colleague relationships that way, which I have done. And then the outline. You do want to have a slide that has an outline. People like to know, especially adult learners, like to know what it is they're going to learn before they learn it, just like you would like mm -hmm. that. Think about yourself and your preferences. What do you want when you're the audience? Create it, include it on the first slide, or the, you know what I mean by the first slide is really the second slide, because the first slide just has your name and the title and things like that. And then follow it. And that's something that people tend to not do. They get sidetracked, they talk about other things, they get questions, so they don't remember to go back and follow it. Slide design, very simple. You, you don't want anything to distract the audience from the message. Font, you really want just one style of font. You're going to want about an 18 point and bigger, 28 or so for the heading. Simple background and bulleted points, no more than four or five. Charts and graphics are more interesting than text. This, um, there are some very cool graphics. The thing is, who is the PowerPoint really for? Who, is, who really is the PowerPoint for? It's for the presenter. It really is. Because the audience doesn't hardly even look at it anyway. They're going to be looking down, they're going to be looking at other things. It's a nice visual for them to look at, but it's not the focus. The focus is what the content is that's coming out of my mouth. Is it okay to use some animation? Like have your words come up the screen or have your graphic come in? Probably. But if you're in an interview and you've got literally 5 to 15 minutes, you know, you yeah. really want, you can do it, but you need to do it minimally. Maybe not every slide, maybe occasionally. Next, we're going to talk about some things that you can do incorrectly. And I think you kind of already, a lot of this is common sense. Spell check. Spelling and grammar is very difficult to see on the slide. It just is. You look at the word 16 times and you know that it says customer. You know that it says customer. But in reality, it says costumer because you flipped the U and the O. It happens on resumes too. And, and if you don't have somebody else eyeball your presentation, it's very easy for, for things like that to go through. So always, always over edit it. Make sure your slides are not too busy. Uh, make sure that the presentation sticks to the time. 
and that your state the other thing that you need to make sure you do is if you do have um, statements or facts that you are able to cite them from where the resource that you got them from you can do that different ways you can cite it on each different um, slide or you can do a resources slide at the end kind of like the bibliography to be successful in your presentation here's a couple of ideas first of all like i said practice if possible go to the room where your presentation will be it is not always possible but there are things that happen for example, your internet access is messed up, your computer is running very slowly, you don't have your presentation where you can access it. So you want to make sure, this is kind of one of the things that's on here, make sure you have an alternate plan. Have your, have your presentation on the cloud, have it on a flash drive, have it in your email, email it to the person that you're interviewing with that coordinated it to begin with. I mean, just do what you can to make sure you have it. But if for some reason, computer is not working in the classroom that you're teaching in which happens the internet is not working the projector is acting weird make sure that you're okay with presenting without the PowerPoint remember the PowerPoint is only for you you'll have to make sure the audience stays engaged a little differently but you'll have to be able to be flexible and sometimes they may do it just on purpose to see how you react I don't think so very often but it could, I've seen things like that happen Record yourself, if possible, not on your cell phone, holding it up, but maybe your friend can, a friend can help you out or something like that, or at least practice in front of the mirror um, and time yourself as well. And then be very flexible. You may end up in the middle of the presentation leaving rooms, changing rooms. You may have people coming and going during your presentation. You may have phones going off during your presentation. You have all kinds of things that could happen and you just have to go with it. A couple of tips. Make sure that you avoid jargon. Try very hard not to use slang. Um, by, by saying yes instead of yeah and things like this. I'm not always that good at those things, but those are things that they notice. Company or industry jargon, make sure that you're careful about including the whole audience. Not everybody understands your language as an IT person. So you need to make sure there might be an HR person in the room. There might be a student from another department in the room if you're applying in higher ed. You don't know who all is in there. Make sure that they understand and make sure you give them opportunity to ask questions. Speak in varying tones and pitches. I was watching some students present um, in one of their final classes recently and one of the students was very scared and that's understandable but the, the tone of voice and the pitch that they used was flat and soft the whole time. And it was, even though the topic to me was extremely interesting, I had a very hard time focusing on the presentation because it was, the presenter was not engaging. Try to keep your hand uh, motions less animated, but do use them. If you can, if you have a prop or if you have uh, something that you can show, you can do that. So at the end of your presentation, you want to use a conclusion. You want to kind of wrap it back up. Okay, so here's what we've covered. We've covered who is the audience, what is the purpose of the presentation. We've covered creating an outline, putting the outline in the PowerPoint and sticking to it. We've covered what should and should not be in the slides. We've talked about some things for your, with your body language and your behavior that are just effective for presentation, whether you have a PowerPoint or not. And with that, we have come to the conclusion of our workshop. Thank you very much for attending our workshop today. Thank you. Thank you.